Let me take you back in time, years ago to when there was a massive craze going on in the Minecraft roleplay community, as well as outside of it too. Five Nights at Freddy's had seemed to become a massive sensation in what felt like such a short period of time games being released back to back while Scott Coffin tried to make the most of its sudden surge in popularity. People love the idea of a haunted pizzeria, where the animatronics that look like Chuck E. Cheese characters come to life and try to unwind you. But this story has so many interpretations. The lore wasn't very thick to start. Hell, I feel like we all are on the same page that originally this was meant to be a dream, but the fandom would not stand for it. <laughs> People pieced little hints over time, creating these super complex theories. Game after game, the lore got thicker and thicker and more complicated for that matter. And that led to a lot of people interpreting the lore in the way they wanted to, crafting their amazing theories, MatPat style. That also led to a lot of retellings of that story through fan games, uh, fan art, and well, Minecraft roleplays. FNAF roleplays ran the MCRP community for a while. Even Afmau made a FNAF roleplay. Heck, there's even an entire channel called Minecraft Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm not joking. It felt like no matter where you went, there was a FNAF roleplay lurking around the corner. For better, or for worse. But what was it about FNAF that became such a popular template for a Minecraft roleplay? And how did it grow so popular that they're still coming out today? Hi, it's Izumi, and I've been doing Minecraft roleplays and watching Minecraft roleplays for a very, very, very long time. I have seen the ups and downs of different trends in the Minecraft roleplaying community, from Yandere High School roleplays to the many daycare roleplays to the Crafting Dead roleplays and especially Five Nights at Freddy's roleplays. I don't think any trend was as influential and widespread as Five Nights at Freddy's was in the role-playing community. I think the only thing that holds a candle to its fame and glory is probably the Yandere roleplays, but even those weren't as influential. For better or for worse, this thing was everywhere. But why? How? And most importantly, when did they become awful? Don't get me wrong, I love Five Nights at Freddy's. I also love many of the Five Nights at Freddy's roleplays that are on YouTube. But like, did we need so many? <laughs> it was an incredibly oversaturated market before I feel like it even got the chance to really explode. And I know me saying that sounds a little counterproductive because it did explode incredibly, way bigger than anyone probably would have ever thought it would. I've even attempted to make a Minecraft FNAF roleplay at one point and we're gonna pretend like that never happened. But let's go ahead and answer some of the questions I've asked so forth. First being, why were Five Nights at Freddy's Minecraft roleplays everywhere? And the answer to that one is pretty simple, because they performed incredibly well at the time. Apparently the Venn diagram of Minecraft lovers and FNAF lovers had this major overlapping section that we did not know existed until Minecraft role players just grabbed FNAF fans by the scruff of their shirt and said, come here little Johnny, I have something for you. Five Nights at Freddy's fans found a safe little cubby hole where theories were praised and different storylines were appreciated and it was safe from the scariness of the outside world and where talking about unaliving children was just a fun little plot point. It's okay, FNAF fans. We won't let Afton come back. Or at least he won't hurt you. Physically. I can't promise emotionally, I'm gonna be honest. We all bonded over these two massive fandoms that were already amazing on their own, but together created this symphony. This symphony that sang about ghost children and getting in alive by animatronics. I'm starting to think we might need to go to therapy, guys. Just maybe. Just a possibility. Nah, it'll be fine. Let's just keep binge-watching Minecraft roleplays we watch as a kid and pretending everything's okay again. Oh god. Now, let's tackle the next question. That's, how did Five Nights at Freddy's influence the Minecraft roleplay community so heavily? As I said before, apparently it's a very big, overlapping audience, but why? 
what draws people into a Five Nights at Freddy's roleplay? Obviously, it being so influential probably has something to do with the fact that the first couple Five Nights at Freddy's Minecraft roleplays took an already beloved indie horror game series and told a new story in that world. A different perspective to see the games from. An outline for a story that I just had to enter in character names and big plot points? Sign me up! A world already built before me that fans have already created really cool stories in that I can either create a new original story in or I can just piece together theories until I like the overarching story? Sounds like a treat. To put it bluntly, it was an easy and fun way to make a compelling horror story in a Minecraft roleplay. Nothing wrong with that, as I said, it was fun. But it's definitely easier to create something inspired by something than it is to create it from scratch. Originality is something that is hard, and it takes a lot of creativity, passion, drive, and well, pure originality doesn't really exist anymore. In a world where everything has been done before, pure originality is sparse. But what's the difference between inspiration and a copycat? Inspiration is taking something you love and having it influence the characters, the world, or just the overall vibe. You can have an original story with tons of inspiration from other stories. Heck, that's tropes. Tropes are just the millions of stories, basic plot points being done again and again and again until it becomes a trope as we know it today. Suddenly, I feel like I'm doing a trope talk on Overly Sarcastic Productions. Inspiration when it goes too far though and too many things are like the inspirational piece of media, that, my friends, is being a copycat. When you take the same plot points, in the same order, with very similar characters, in a very similar setting, well, what's unique about it at that point? And what is the driving force of the creator? Is it, I want to make something cool, or is it, I want to make something that will be popular? Of course, it's fine to want your projects to succeed. But when you copy and paste a series because that series is popular and you want your series to be popular, that's when it becomes a problem. Being a creative is just that. Being creative. And that means transforming the thing you're inspired by in some way or coming up with an idea with very little outside influence. But hey, it's easier to copy. When Five Nights at Freddy's was such a big phenomenon in pop culture at the time, What's a better world to tell a story in? You could take it the ghost children route, you could take it the Afton sci-fi route, or you can create something incredibly unique to the story so far. Again, depending on if you are copying or just inspired, the amount of influence from other FNAF roleplays can fluctuate. FNAF laid out a really easy path to follow to make a really good Minecraft roleplay. Now, I need to talk about the oversaturation that was the FNAF roleplay scene. There were too many freaking roleplays. There were too many FNAF Minecraft roleplays. <laughs> and too many of them were just the same FNAF roleplay, copied and pasted over and over and over again. It became stale. It became boring. And it gave a really bad reputation to Minecraft Five Nights at Freddy's roleplays. It left a sour taste in people's mouths, and not the good type that comes from sour Skittles or Sour Patch Kids. The type that more so matches two-week-old expired pizza on a pizzeria floor only for ghost children to nibble off of slowly over time. Angry at security guards? No, 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 no. I'm just upset that my only food option is expired pizza that's on the floor. What is this, Chuck E. Cheese? I'm kidding, Chuck E. Cheese. Please don't sue me. I'm sure your pizza's amazing and totally not recycled. I don't know. I've never been to Chuck E. Cheese. I didn't have a childhood. I was just born as an adult in a cocoon in a lab, made to make YouTube videos forever and ever. And ever. And ever. Oh, I had my eyes open for too long. Moral of the story is Five Nights at Friday's was a really fun world to tell stories in, as well as a very easy world to tell stories in. And a lot of people kind of hopped onto the trend without caring about what they were making. For those who made original, unique, and interesting Minecraft roleplays, thank you for doing this beloved indie horror franchise some justice. But hey, that's just a theory. Onizumi theory. See you in the next video. Bye bye